I am fine to be confused as one of the panelists because we have a great panel here today. Hi everyone, my name is Danielle Dubravac and I am Director of Ecosystem Communications at the Foundation. And I am thrilled for this panel to discuss pathways to data onboarding. Um, in today's increasingly data-driven world, the need for efficient, secure, and cost-effective storage has never been greater. And Filecoin, the largest decentralized data storage network, um, has emerged as a platform that can meet these needs. So, um, however, the process uh, to onboarding data Filecoin comes with its own set of challenges and, and opportunities. So, uh, today we have a diverse panel with both experts who represent data onboarding solutions, as well as a data client who can speak to experience of um, onboarding data to the Filecoin network. Um, so with that, I will hand it over to each of you. We can start with Hannah to introduce yourself and, um, and your project. For sure. Hey, everyone. Um, my name's Hannah. Uh, I work, uh, I'm the CTO of the Staracha project. Uh, we are a storage network built on Filecoin. Uh, we essentially provide super easy onboarding and, and also offboarding of data onto Filecoin. Um, with a, we've essentially built a suite of tools um, and a website that uh, together you can essentially take any arbitrary type of data that you have and simply use our tools to put it into our network. It will get to Filecoin. Uh, within 72 hours and be on the Filecoin network, backed up on the Filecoin network. Um, I, I've heard, uh, so I, I've worked on Filecoin for a long time, uh, <laughs> including pre-mainnet as one of the developers. Um, and I'm certainly familiar with how hard it is to quote, put data on Filecoin um, and have it, especially if you want to get that data back. Um, uh, our, However, I will say with our, you know, with our tools, I've heard things like, oh, it takes six months to onboard data into Filecoin. I'm like, we just, you just download our software and, and run it and it'll, it'll get on Filecoin. You don't, there's nothing else to it, you know? So, um, uh, so that's surprising. So it's surprising to me that people, uh, maybe if you're, go, if you're doing everything manually, then it's hard, but we, are, we, we think we've got a set of tools that really sort of nail the onboarding uh, piece, especially we're mostly focused within like, we are not targeting huge enterprise customers. We can support them, but that's not our like our immediate go-to. We're very Web3 native in terms of like the market segments we target. Like, so we're working with uh, we're working with Web3 gaming. We're doing a little bit in the data availability space. We store a ton of NFTs on our platform. OpenSea uh, NFTs to me. Tatum. All of these are customers of ours. Many of the folks who. Uh, in the, earlier would have used NFT storage, now use us. Um, and all of that data will, you, you use our, we basically provide a set of software tools, software libraries and or command line tools that you can use to upload data into our network and, uh, and, and essentially we then have in the back end a pretty, a, a very well built out and also production tested um, uh, pipeline that will get that data to Filecoin. Um, we currently store about three petabytes of data. We can support data of arbitrary sizes from all the way from a one megabyte image all the way to a, you know, uh, potentially a hundred terabyte, you know, I don't know what, what costs a hundred terabytes these days, probably AI, AI training sets and whatnot. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's what we, that's, that is our, our tool and, and it makes things pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, it's sort of, when I say it's straightforward, it's in the, the underlying uh, back end of it is, is not straightforward at all and it's very much like a third generation um, uh, software architecture that, you know, we think we finally got it right uh, this, this time. And so, uh, and the one caveat I will say is that right now we also hold an additional copy uh, to solve the retrieval problem, um, but people can put stuff into our network and expect, you know, an experience that is very similar to uh, like an S3 or another centralized provider. Um, and including on the retrieval side, we, you know, we'll try to hit, you know, really good latencies in terms of, you know, 100, 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. Again, that's not actually happening from Filecoin itself. It's backed up on Filecoin, but it is not being served from Filecoin. It means our pricing is much more in the neighborhood of an S3. So if you're looking for super cheap storage, we're not the cheapest, but we're, 
we're competitive with what's out in Web2. So yeah, that's, our, that's what we're working on. And uh, over the next year, we're going to be mobilizing some new developments in the protocol, as well as a number, you know, uh, some partnerships with uh, Phil Oz, the core development team, um, and uh, uh, partnerships with storage providers to essentially bring them in to the hot layer of our network that serves data uh, back to people um, so that we can actually serve super fast retrievals directly from Filecoin. Um, and and, you know, and also decentralize some of our own under, underlying infrastructure so that we are a, truly a network of storage, of storage providers. So, yeah, Thank that's you. it. Cool. All right. Daniel? <laughs> Thanks for the intro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Daniel. I'm the product lead of Nuclei. Um, and uh, we've actually uh, started collaboration with the Filecoin Foundation. Um, we're a data sharing uh, and collaboration ecosystem. Uh, so what that means, uh, we have actually two go-to markets. One is we give users really uh, control back over uh, the data that they're supposed to own. So if you have, uh, whatever, a smartwatch, uh, normally this data is kept by big tech. Uh, we really want uh, you to give you the power back. Um, and uh, the other one is to make it very easy for enterprises to collaborate around data. Uh, what we see is that enterprises really have str are struggling with uh, collaborations around data. They're building constantly point-to-point -point solutions uh, to share uh, certain uh, data, but there's no agnostic solution. Uh, so we're, we've built Nuclei uh, that acts as like a virtual layer on top of every uh, data ecosystem, even like Snowflake or Databricks. You can just plug it in um, and then start sharing uh, the data across. Um, we do this, of course, underpinned by a layer one uh, network. Uh, so everything is, is validated by our own network and it's, it's really uh, fine-tuned uh, for this data sharing. Uh, and data collaboration uh, use case. Um, yeah, that's in short, uh, Nuclei. Awesome. Well, a little bit also about my side. Great pleasure to be here. My name is Constantine. I'm Chief Strategy Officer at Titan Network. What we are really building is essentially a new incentive layer on top of global idle resources. We allow our community to aggregate storage, bandwidth, and compute from all type of devices, whether you have a mobile device, computer, or anything else that really have at your disposal and that sits on your desk day by day, you can contribute those resources to the Titan network, and then we will distribute that and allow you to build cloud solutions on top of the centralized network. So that's where we find a really unique use case for otherwise sitting idle devices around the globe. We incentivize and bring value back to our community for contributing the resources to the ecosystem. And where it connects to the network and where it connects to the Filecoin in the, in the use case, what we really provide to our partners in the ecosystem is that you're not only able to leverage Titan Network by itself as an isolated system, we collaborate with different providers such as Filecoin in case of cold storage that our users can simply onboard and offboard data to also Filecoin while benefiting from the infrastructure built by Titan Network. And that's where we see where it's super, super unique in a sense of we are truly standing to the values of the web free space where it should be collaborative, interoperable, and allowing you to bridge it in a seamless way, helping users to onboard and to get familiar with different ecosystems is something that we see great value of, and that's why we're happy to be here today. All right. Turn to you, Mara. Okay, mm -hmm. terrific. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name's Mara McMahon, and I am co founder of DStore. And what we do is we essentially make decentralized storage tenable. Just let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> I think a lot of what we've been hearing and talking about already on the panel is that decentralized storage is a little hard to get to, a little hard to understand, a little hard to get involved with, that kind of thing. What we are doing is we are trying to take the hard out of it. So we are very focused on uh, dstore.com being the easiest place to literally go and upload data onto Filecoin. Today we are entirely Filecoin 
centric. As we grow, we may include other protocols, but today we are working with Filecoin storage providers. And you know, one of the things that I would say then, that's, that's to everybody who owns data, right? To the other side, that's the demand side. On the supply side, what I would say is, DStore is here to be a go-to-market engine, uh, creating demand, doing sales, completing deals, billing, L1 support for providers who are working on Filecoin today, which is predominantly storage providers, but there are some other, you know, next to Filecoin type of providers that we work with as well. Um, earlier today, co-founder Jen King, right there, talked to all of us uh, about a really great partnership we just got set up with uh, Camcom based out of Sweden. They have two customers that they've brought in, Yaypal and Fieldstream, and we are engaged with them and helping them bring their data onto Filecoin through uh, Angelo's decentrally um, service provider, storage provider. So we are, you know, really short version is hopefully we're the easy button. That's what we're here to be for everybody. Service storage providers and data owners. Thank you. Obviously a wide range of use cases and focuses and specializations and angles. Um, in case you missed it from Daniel, you're hearing it first, which is Nuclei AI is collaborating with the foundation to upload um, metadata to the network. They worked with uh, Lighthouse Storage, which is another onboarding solution in the ecosystem. So I thought I'd start with you to describe that decision of decentralized storage, why Filecoin, how that process has been, and, and then we'll take it from there. And please, other panelists, feel free to jump in. I want this to be a conversation. Sure. Um, yeah, so um, at Nuclei, we're kind of storage uh, agnostic in the sense that we need to cater also to uh, enterprises. Sometimes they have uh, centralized storage uh, that they want to connect uh, to the platform, so we are supporting that. But of course, we're a Web3 company at heart, and there was no uh, basically decentralized storage provider that we connected yet with. Uh, so I went out and uh, got actually in contact here with uh, Jenk sitting here, uh, uh, developer relations of, uh, of Falcoin. And um, we started actually explaining our, our use cases and also our future uh, vision. Um, uh, so the first use case you, uh, you said already is like uh, storing the metadata on uh, the Falcoin network. So to give you a bit of context why we are doing that, uh, at Nuclei you can describe your data in, uh, in detail through the metadata. Mm. So providing added nice. context to the data and we see that as a, a public good. Um, so, and since it's a public good and we want to make it uh, forever available, uh, well, we need to store it somewhere secure and there, this is where Filecoin uh, comes in. Um, basically, after a few sketches and uh, getting some docs from, uh, from Jenks, uh, our developers uh, start working on, uh, on the integration and uh, we, fairly, we had it quickly fairly uh, spun up and now we are, uh, we're live, uh, so I hope, uh, yeah, we look forward to, of course, collaborating on other uh, use cases. We also see uh, the need for enterprises, for example, to really store some uh, data of, of say, uh, temperature meters, uh, because they're afraid that uh, this data might be tempered with in the end, right. uh, and for insurance purposes, they want to um, have it somewhere securely stored. Um, from the Web3 industry perspective more broadly and bringing over more enterprise and Web2 data, what if you had to choose, and I know you each covered a range, but sort of what are you finding is resonating most with your customers? Is it the security? Is it the data provenance? What, what are you finding with your clients is... Um, that real use case that's that's winning. I, I mean, I think that for for I have this this sort of view about like getting people into to store on Filecoin, which is that like 
if people are looking for the pure web two experience, right? Like, okay, I want to. We're going to quote compete with Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. Well, most of these teams do not have Amazon developer strength, right? Like, and they don't have they don't have decades of experience and hyper scaled operations to you know like to compete feature by feature with Amazon. But a lot of people, a, a lot of folks in Web three need a storage solution and. Uh, they they want a couple things out of it sure, for sure. I think some people would very much like decentralized from a philosophical perspective, but I think from a from an actual direct, you know, from a like what would motivate a business to do a thing, they want they 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 want a couple of things. First, they want it to at least for us. We work mostly with you know folks who are already in Web three in one way or another. Um, they want something that is going to. Um, that is not going to cause them headaches, right? Is going to be is is going to pass their users sort of like smell test for decentralization. <laughs> um, and among other and and for us at least, we think we can unlock with some of our technologies some really good sort of like what I would call developer platform features, where like they like we can for 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 our solution for Storacha, we provide ways for people to you know, build on top of us and then actually provide their users the ability to upload. So there are, there are even a bunch of companies that resell our platform um, as, as if it were, you know, their mm -hmm. own thing. But, what, you know, and this, this particularly applies to the NFT space, but, like, we've, we've built our whole stack around, uh, specifically around a decentralized authorization technology called UCAN, which is a lot of mumbo jumbo, but the short way of saying, the short way of saying what it delivers is the ability for someone to use to use our platform and then delegate only partial or small or you know low level access to their own users to you know in a way where their users only have permission to do what they want them to do but they're still ultimately putting all their data into our platform and then going to filecoin obviously the other bit on filecoin is that like people like the fact that you know their their data is actually proven to be there which is mm -hmm. you know not present. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always it's always interesting like the deeper we always get down on ourselves for using trust in any fashion and then like but you look at the you know people the relationships around most storage platforms and they're all trust based including like the enforcement of access control which uh, you know, can I download this data that's supposed to, that do I have the right to download it? You're trusting Amazon not to not to like to, to play by the rules you set up, and they have no, you have no way of guaranteeing that you just trust them. Mm -hmm. um, and people often complain about that in a decentralized context, but like we're actually trying to think about going farther than what you would get from a centralized platform. We're already at that at the level of what you would get there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, Mara, you I, you also work with a lot of customers. I'm yeah, sorry. I do. I I have uh, lots of insights around this, and uh, we are actually conducting. D Store is. Uh, working with blocks and files, and we will be coming out soon with a state of Filecoin uh, report, and we hope to reproduce this every year. So that's just like a total teaser, and I don't have any more information to share with anybody, but please look for it. It'll be out soon. Um, aside from that, what I can tell you uh, is from our personal conversations, we've probably... we. I don't have like up to the minute, but we've had well over 400, maybe 500, 550 conversations with individual users who are interested in onboarding data onto Filecoin. So just based on that, um, there's a couple of things that I would talk to right off the top. First and foremost is they're worried about the sketch factor, right? Is this, is this sketchy? Is this like a science experiment? Mm -hmm. Like. Mm, I'm not so <laughs> sure about this, right? So number one is removing the sketch factor. <laughs> um, the, the second thing, uh, probably second and third, is really around security and privacy. Uh, you know, Filecoin got started with the base of public information, and so now when you go to a Web2 type company, and they start to, you know, if they do a little research about Filecoin, they're like, oh, it's for public data. My data, not so public, mm -hmm. right? They want 
security and they want privacy. And a big part of what we're doing, and we'll have a fun announcement tomorrow, which I can't wait to get out there, but there are storage providers who take care of that. And that's really exciting. So if you have GDPR concerns, if you have privacy, security, and certainly want to get rid of the sketch factor, there are storage providers that can do that. And, and so we can just address that immediately. And so look for the press release tomorrow. Um, <laughs> and know that, you know, sort of, like quickly off the top of my head, those are the three things that would come into my mind. I can, if we wanted to sit here for the rest of today uh, and into tomorrow, we could talk about all the ICPs that we are, oh my gosh, sorry, that we are planning for um, as we go to market. You know, folks like Innovative Ian and uh, uh, Wes, Web3, right? These are folks who are trying to innovate and do things and build on Web3. And we have, uh, you know, Jill of all trades and folks like that, that we are specifically targeting for specific services with specific storage providers. Um, so in the end, the the, you know, what I would say is it really comes down to your ideal customer profile, what the features are that the SP has, and who they match with in the marketplace. Can, can I add, so, please, I, I, I wanted to ask about, uh, or not ask about, but point out, but there's, there's a, the, you guys have an approach which is actually really critical right now, which is like, so there's, the resources have always existed in, file, in the Filecoin network. There have always been SPs who are reliably serve data, right? Yes. There just aren't that many of them, and they're very hard to find. Right. And so you guys have your approach, which I think is so, like it's very it's very bootstrap. You're just like, well, we're going to operate as people who are going to connect other folks mm -hmm. to the right people and make it easy to find the right people. And 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 I think it's a it's 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 such a like. It, it, I, I was I was thinking about like like the D store approach as it, and versus the approach that we we I think uh, at Storacha we're really aiming for, which is like a fully automated network, which is both like hyper ambitious and like will be great when it exists, but as much takes a long time, right? It does you know, take like, a long time, yeah, and so like, like we got to start now. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And so I just want to like point out there's this really interesting like dichotomy of like different ways people are approaching this problem because like a lot of the, everything you want want to solve in a like automated network native way is going to take a while like oh i want to make it so that i just the, the network can just find a storage provider yeah. for me in software based on my requirements based on gdpr and encryption and acls and all that like that's going to take a while to build the software to do that but like in the meantime you can have people solve this you know um and that's that's super right. awesome yeah as, i always as, thought that was as Juan would cool ask us for the last year and a half he's yeah. like where are we onboarding data? Let's onboard data. And it's like, well, you've got to get it out there. You've got to let people know, hey, yeah. hit this button, go there, do that, talk to this person, do these things to yeah. onboard data. And so when we nucleated from PL, it became very clear that that's what our mission is, is yeah. to make that happen and yeah. starting now. And I think it's also super, super important to really start thinking it's not only that we have to onboard some data to Filecoin and that's the end of the story. It's like, where is the use case for people that try to onboard data comes from? That's right. We yep. incredibly 100%. see a lot of problems uh, in this space right now where people actually come, especially more like a developer community, someone who actively wants to build on Filecoin or Titan network ecosystems, but they're seeing the struggle, of, oh, in order to onboard, I need to have at least like 64 gigs or preferably 100 gigs at least so that people start sealing me. So instead of that only focus where, oh, do we focus only on large storage providers that brings immense to the network. I think the reality is kind of the other way around in the internet today is where there are bits and pieces of mm. small, small content of data that needs to be as functional as large data sets. And if you can solve and tailor the solutions to specific customers, whether that's, oh, I'm just a developer who wants to upload content of my application to Filecoin, it should be as simple as a large storage provider coming to you and telling like, oh, I want to seal and make available and uh, store for a long, long 
time my images from the space. And these two Absolutely. seemingly large and different problems should be solved by the same network. It's just, in my opinion, that the onboarding solutions have to be different. Yeah. And whether that comes to you, Mara, and like handpicking you where you should go, or to service providers on top of Filecoin That's that really easy. connects you to the network in different ways yeah. and have a fine-tuned solution for your specific use case, whether that's uh, content of my smartwatch or data from your application or Absolutely. large content provider. This yep. all has to be served by different providers, and they, there yeah. should be an ecosystem ready for each type of user. Yeah. I will, if you are a developer who just wants to put data onto Filecoin, you just have a, an image, a small thing, just use us. We will get your data on Filecoin. <laughs> you can use our software tools. You don't have to talk to anyone. You can download it. I know I'm speaking to the developers who don't like to talk to anyone. Um, like, you know, like, yeah, our tools are, are available. They're open source. And they will put your data on Filecoin reliably. So yeah, cool, sorry. Did you? <laughs> uh, what, Cheap what we noticed uh, when we were talking with, uh, with enterprises is really, is there a business case for it? And um, Web3 uh, comes sometimes from a very deep technical or ideological uh, standpoint. And um, <clears throat> I think we should focus on our strengths within the industry, right? Traceability, security, uh, but at the same time, really focus on is there a business case to be made? Because mm -hmm. some uh, enterprises just say, well, I don't care that I trust uh, Amazon. I'm uh, if Amazon goes broke, well, one of the biggest companies in the world goes broke. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, I'll, or uh, I'll back it up on Google. There's another one if that one goes broke. So there needs to be really a uh, clear uh, defined use case and a willingness to pay. And I think that's what we are often uh, forgetting. And that's what we see when we are talking to enterprise. They really understand Web3 technology nowadays. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> for us, they see the benefits. When we are talking to them, they really see the benefits. But in the end, it's like, okay, what's my bottom line? Uh, it's going to cost me. I'm, it's, it's insurance. And uh, am I willing to pay for this insurance? Yeah. And sometimes the, the answer is yes. And other times, the answer is no. And then I don't, I don't think there we need to try to convince. Uh, we'll get there eventually, we'll have better solutions out there, but for now, let's just well, I think focus we should on our strength. pick that up later, because unfortunately we're out of time, okay. but maybe we'll do a Twitter spaces or something, keep the conversation going. Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. We sure. really enjoyed it. Thank well, you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.